Good morning and welcome to Morning Java, brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where for a limited time only, you can get the pulled pork subs and sandwiches. Slow smoked for 16 hours. Slow smoked for 16 hours. Let's talk a little baseball. The Pirates are also slow smoked over the last couple of weeks. They've gotten slow smoked for five series now with these losses. They're a game over 500, and yet, when you look at this last stretch in particular here, doesn't it feel kind of weird just because of the Felipe Vasquez factor? Yeah, it's, it's tough to put a finger on the exact thing, but Felipe Vasquez, if it's the same guy that's pitched for them for the last season and a half, mm -hmm. you're looking at another four or five wins oh, over Oh, and we're all season. glowing about them right now. What is wrong with Felipe? I don't know because in two of the games that I saw him pitch in last week, he came in after taking a couple of days off, whether something was going on with the arm or not. It was a mental break. He came in, he hit 100, 100, 100. He, he was throwing the slider with efficiency. He was hitting the back door with it, which, I mean, he just kills right-handed batters with the yep. back door slider. He's you know throwing it low and away to the lefties. And he, he was getting guys, and he's he did getting, it for two games in a row. And and he he threw hard for a couple of games in a row. He told our Lance Lysowski out in St. Louis, and the Pirates were discussing openly that he's tipping pitches, that that happened too. But so now we have him holding the arm, we have him tipping pitches, we have him not throwing hard enough at times. It's hard to tell what it is, you yeah. know? It, it's like... I, I talked with Felipe right before the road trip at PNC Park and asked him what he needs to do. He just says, throw hard, throw hard. Well, that's his solution for everything, except when it isn't, because he was throwing hard in St. Louis, and they were clobbering him in that game. The, the problem with throwing hard is I've seen some stats on this this season where his fastball numbers are way up and the slider numbers way down from, from last season. And that can't happen because the slider just opens the door for right. him to pound the fastball right. where he wants to. And he's got to get that back door in low action in order to get guys out. So here's a bold stance. Austin Meadows needs to play. Yeah, right. I mean, this isn't one that you throw out there for debate because it's silly. I understand he's a rookie. He's not going to keep hitting $4 billion for the rest of his career. He might. He might not. <laughs> Eventually, somebody's going to figure out some weaknesses, some spots in his swing that they can attack, some shortcomings. Uh, but how do you get him out there? Do you just rotate the other three? Because two of the other... Or is it just as simple as some people are trying to make it that, well, you just sit Polanco? Right now, that might be the simple answer, and it, it lets Gregory Polanco get himself going. Which in, he in started to do in St. Louis, though. I mean, that's, that's in there, too, you know? It's tough. They have four outfielders that, by all rights, should be able to play for, for an MLB baseball team right now. Yep. I mean, this Austin Meadows situation, it, it was in, unfathomable. I, when Lance Lyskowski and I over at the Pirates, you know, we're talking about what do they do in this extended absence of, of Starling Marte, and I suggest bringing up Meadows. Lance says he's not ready. I su suggest maybe he's a gamer. Maybe he comes to the MLB and just shreds. And that's what he's, like, this guy is killing home runs that he didn't do this in the yeah, minor Yeah, you know, that's part of, uh, if I could throw a basketball parallel into that, uh, point guards become better with every higher level that they go to, elite point guards, because at the lower levels you make great passes and people have no idea what to do with them or aren't even in position uh, to make something happen. So you're saying people shouldn't have no, I'm skipped saying, Steph Curry I'm in the draft. I'm saying in Meadows, I don't even know who that is Sunday, <laughs> I'm saying in Meadows' case, if he's seeing better pitches that are attacking the strike zone more often and he confines his strike zone, it's something he and I talked about before this last road trip, where even though he doesn't hardly draw any walks, he's still selective. And he's selective within the zone. It's kind of a weird combination. So I think that might be it. Instead of dealing with minor league pitching that can be, you know, all over the sure. place, he sees more and better pitches, and he just goes, you know what, I'm just going to cream these. But how does he get in the lineup? What do you do? Do you sit, Gregory? I, I still like George. the idea of rotating guys, um, not on a strict rotation, but I think you can rotate them situationally. I think Clint Hurdle's going to handle that. What I don't like is the Sean Rodriguez. I mean, Sean Rodriguez can't be getting mixed into the outfield. If you're going to get him out there, and I understand the need to get him going to, um, you know, have it be in the infield or don't play him at all. It's never a bad time to switch up to hockey. The Penguins uh, are not going to be 
and are not pursuing Ilya Kovalchuk, Jim Rutherford told me over the weekend. Uh, good, bad, indifferent. He's 35. 12 years ago, that was my dream. Well, wow. seeing the guy ago, play with Sidney yeah. Crosby. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's good. I, I don't think that the Penguins can afford to add another guy. Well, in what, the what kind of player, if it were a winger? And that, that's really the area that, if you're talking about scoring balance, as Jim did in this interview, what kind of a winger do they need to add? It doesn't have to be a person, but what kind? It's a tough question because, I, I mean, I think that the Penguins got ground down uh, through the playoffs and through smaller. the end of the season. Uh, the team is really small. I'm not saying this is not another Matt Sunday, Ryan Reeves argument, but I think that a winger that provides a little bit more size or just a little bit more grit, that he's able to just not stir things up, but just withstand some of that battle down the, and down the stretch. I, and I like that point because one of the things that you saw, and this wasn't just in the Washington series, it was also in the Philadelphia series, even though the Flyers have a lot of smaller, more mobile type defensemen, is that... Look, they didn't exactly shut down Jake Gensel, so don't take this in that context. But guys like Jake Gensel and Connor Sheary, you know, they bounce off people. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, they do wear down. They do get more fatigued, more tired. Um, I think that Jim Rutherford values that to an extent, but he doesn't want to do it, and Mike Sullivan certainly doesn't want to do it at the expense of speed. No, and we've seen teams take kind of the Penguins formula of speed and apply it to finding guys that are a little bit bigger. They, they can wear teams down. I know that Winnipeg plays in the West, but I mean, they're a team that's fast and size. And they do that through all four lines for the most part. Yeah. And I mean, I, that's ideal. Obviously we're not saying it, we're not revolutionizing. No, anything no, no, here. no, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, obviously teams like Anaheim that had a little bit of success when they played the Penguins just twice in the, in the year. They're able to take away more more space from the speedy Penguins because they're fast, but they have guys that are three times the size of a Jake Gensel. You know, the the further you can reach, the more of a pass you can take. And then away. again, there's another solution for this, and that is to have Zach Aston Reese and Daniel Sprong, who's not a big dude, but he's also not small. No, I mean he's. Uh, <laughs> you look at him next to Jake Gensel or Connor Sherry on the yeah, ice, he's, and he's yeah, a big dude. Yeah, that's right. And and but Zach Aston Reese, in addition to being a little bit bigger also plays a lot bigger. He's really sturdy. People bounce off him. You know who else fits that mold, as crazy as this sounds? Because he's not a big dude. Is Dominic Simone. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I mean, he, but I, I, some of that's going along the lines of, of playing with Sidney Crosby and just adapting to, to his play style. Because we've seen Jake Gensel really like add a little bit of physicality. He tries to play bigger than he is. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've, we saw that all year. Right. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But... Yeah, this is where I think you're going to see Jim try to tinker the most. There are mythical things and narratives that people talk about in OTAs and like, oh no, Antonio Brown wasn't there for some sessions, or Ben was only... These things don't matter in the slightest. Things that actually matter at OTAs, first of all, that's a very short list, but things that actually matter and things that are actually discussed by the participants are things like, how are they going to stop the run the next time they face a Jacksonville? Are that they going to be able to? You tell me, Sunday. You go first here. I, I think I think one of the big things that this team has to do is they have to keep number ninety-one, and they and they have to keep his counterpart and Cam Cam Hayward Hale, healthy, healthy yeah. all season. Well, let's throw Javon Hargrave in there too because yeah, sure. he had the bad back, which was a pretty big variable in there. Uh, Stefan Tuit had basically a, a busted wing for all intents and purposes with yep. the torn biceps. Javon had the the bad back. They couldn't put Daniel McCullers out there. So yeah, health is an issue. And then from there, they could just double-team Cam, and then Cam had no... I, I don't know if it's reasonable to expect that two guys with that size and the speed that they play with and really the explosiveness that they play with, taking on you know two or three offensive linemen at a time, I don't think it's reasonable to expect that they can stay 100% for even two-thirds of the season. Cam and Tuit. Right. Yeah. I mean, so there has to be more of a solution. They have to get more support and, and penetration to, to attack... The offensive line so that they're able to you know create a second layer of attack but there's different ways to do that too and on one hand you had an inside linebacker and vince williams who had seven sacks which is crazy for an inside linebacker Vinny would tell you this himself <laughs> um they he also, wanted even more he told us that last year <laughs> that's right they also had uh talk about you know busted wings tyler matikavich was playing with a a, a bum shoulder for three quarters of the season mm. it turns out um to well, me, yeah, he went out the same the same game that Ryan Shazier got hurt. To me, the biggest variable in this is what do you do 
with Bud Dupree. We know what they're going to get out of T.J. Watt because he's so versatile. Everybody boasts about that, and rightfully so. He drops into coverage. He's got passes defense. He's got interceptions. He's made plays in coverage uh, in addition to making splash plays up front. Bud, you know, just let him go. Just go nuts, just, right? Just, you well, know, if your problem with Bud is that he's, you know, not thinking the game at a high enough level or he's overthinking the game, then have him not think at all. The last time we talked about this was about T.J. Watt and letting him be kind of that Ray Lewis and float yep. and attack and, and do those things. Why not do the same thing with Bud, but on a different level, go not as much of the pass defense, just, just go get him. Go get him. Yeah, do nothing else other than to go get the guy. And if he's even remotely successful at it, you have a different dimension to the defense. I like it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, that, I, no, no, we're not oversimplifying this. I no, but that's why those guys up. are going to move around, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. And, and the more they move around, now you have real options for those interior linemen other than uh, just plow through a mountain and get your guy. Thank <laughs> you.